And the other question is, am I ready to really look at my unhealthy mind? To be with it, with compassion, with understanding, with wisdom, not with rejection. That just creates more problems. More tightness, more narrowness. Am I accepting my own shortcomings, failures, having harmed others, having been harmed, and so on? How much do I cling still? How much do I still refuse to let go? And again, just look, please don't judge. Just recognize, ah, that's the problem. I'm still clinging. I'm still using it for something. Then again, in a more neutral way, come back to what is a healthy mind? So again, it's up to us what we want to do, because the mind is ours. We can't blame anybody else. That's the good thing. But we have a tendency to put the blame outside, and then it's not much chance. Yeah, I could blame, you know, like my bad liver. I could blame the people who made the alcohol. <laughs> if they wouldn't have made the alcohol, I wouldn't have drank it. It's their fault. Good night. That's what we usually do. Oh, that would be totally ridiculous. Okay. So today is Yom Kippur, as I understand. I'm not Jewish. I don't know so much about the whole thing. Um, what I understand, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, it's the day of forgiving. So what does it mean to forgive? So what is your work there? What is usually your work there? Uh, as an individual to feel crushed on the floor full of guilt and shame and kind of put ashes on your head and uh, tear out your hair if you have some and feel really guilty about what you've done is that the job on Yom Kippur? Huh? It feels guilty you should be the other person when you have harmed somebody you don't feel guilty when you have harmed somebody? No, don't answer me that question straight or not. Ask yourself, how do I feel when I harm somebody? How do I feel when I harm somebody? Not you personally now. How do you feel when you harm somebody? We'll, we'll meditate on it also after the break. How does it feel knowing that I've hurt somebody? Is that contributing to my happiness? Why should the other one feel guilty? That's a bit strange. I don't know. I just find it strange. So, um, okay. So, what does it mean to forgive? Not to feel bad that feelings for that person. Not to have bad feelings anymore. For that person. For the person that, we... that could be me. Like, <laughs> I hurt you. And not to feel, not to, to forgive myself, not to have bad feelings anymore. Now I'm being very provocative here. Okay? On purpose. 
that's the step we have to make in the forgiving. And this we don't allow ourselves. This is why we slip it with us when we have harmed somebody else for years and years and years and years because we feel guilty. And we think that with that guilty feeling, it, that's making it up for what we've done because we feel bad. And it's so stupid. See, if you can't let go of, these, uh, of the guilt, then you don't want to see the other person anymore. And you can't make up for it. You need to do something. Just saying, oh, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. That's not enough. That's cruel. And that we feel. This is why we find it so difficult to forgive. But if you have something, somebody who comes in a very genuine way, who says, look, I'm really, really sorry. I know I hurt you. I wish it wouldn't have happened, but it has happened. And then asks, what can I do for you? Because you owe that person something. But the ego somehow refuses to give something because we're afraid of these people that we hurt. Why? Huh? Why are we afraid of these people? Okay, maybe it becomes more clear. Turn the whole thing around. Somebody hurt you. How do you view the person? With kindness? Huh? Connect his deed, what he did to me, to you know, the personality as his person. Yeah, yeah. So, so I don't, I don't separate these things. So do you see, when you see the person, is your heart open? No. No. Uh, I can see, you should have seen her face. <laughs> no. <laughs> I wish to. No, no, no. It's just take it, again, take it as theory and hypothesis. Don't make it too personal, otherwise it becomes too difficult. Yeah. So I have heard Luna, and she doesn't, she sees me with such a face, she has power over me. When I hurt somebody, somewhere our intelligence understands I owe them something, and they have power over me. So the victim, the one who was being hurt, I'm trying to avoid the word victim. So the one that has been hurt uses that power by allowing him or herself to be unkind. This is the game that we play around being hurt and hurting others. We will meditate on it, so maybe it becomes a bit more clear. I will guide you through that. Feeling the one who has hurt somebody and looking that way, looking at the one I've hurt and looking the other way. It can be quite striking to see what's really going on. Yeah. We're kind of afraid of those people that we have harmed because they have power over us. We owe them something. It reminds us that we It also reminds us of our negative sides. But when you, this is why, uh, you know, apologizing, okay. If you want to try, you can. But the problem is that when you apologize, sorry, I'm looking that direction. Are you really comfortable sitting like that? You look totally cramped. You know, like the head like this. It's like, of course. Okay. But maybe, I feel pain when I see you sitting like that almost. Yeah. Well, also the lady next to you. Both, both of you are okay. If, that's your, if that is your idea of comfortable, okay. So it's like, okay. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Yeah. Okay. But still, you, you see, I'm also talking about mind states because the, the 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 kind of the mind takes on a little bit the state of how the body sits also. So, but anyway, it's okay. Yeah. Try to see a difference. Try to see the difference when we try to sit up as best as we can, or when we just kind of slouch. Because when I say relaxed and comfortable, we think like that. Yeah. When I say relaxed and comfortable, I think like this, because then the mind is centered and it's easier for the mind to be awake. That's why. Yeah. And then maybe you feel the difference of mind state uh, sitting like this, or you know, also kind of sitting like that, or sitting up. This is why sometimes in the meditation, especially when I feel that it gets difficult for people, 
sometimes I really throw it in, sit up, to open up. Because this is not good for your mind. It's really not good for your mind, for your mental health. It makes your mind very small and very, you try to protect yourself, but what you're doing, you're kind of, you're making the heart even more tight and you're putting a, a crust around it. Whereas this opens and courage. Yeah, we need courage to survive samsara. Life is difficult, I tell you. Okay, so if somebody comes and really genuinely says, um, look, I'm really sorry, uh, can I do something for you? Would you like that? Huh? No, okay, I would. You know, okay, it's fine. If you don't like it, it's fine, you know, I mean. No, you like to, I, you know, I, I understand that people like to indulge in their anger and hurt. Look, don't talk about other people. We're looking at ourselves. Okay. What other people feel, we don't know. We imply. As she said, she just said, don't, don't kind of believe what you see. She's so right. We always think what others feel, kind of, we always think we know what others feel. Most of the time we don't even know what we ourselves feel, but that's the only thing we're in contact with. <laughs> if I hurt you, and I, and, you know, like out of anger or whatever, and I come and in a genuine way you see that I'm suffering because of that, and I genuinely come and say, oh, I'm really sorry that I hurt you, what can I do for you? You wouldn't like that? What would, what would you like that? In that case, okay, let's take the hypothesis. In that case, I hurt you. What would you like me to do? I need to do something. We need to do something when we, hear, when we hurt somebody. We can't just let it go like this. What would you like me to do? It's not me, you, it's me. I have to give up my anger. Okay. And you don't want the other to participate in it? To help you giving up your anger? Does it help to give up the anger when you see that the other person doesn't care at all? Would it help your anger if you see the other person is hurting also because they have harmed you? Would it be helpful, you think, because this is it. Please, maybe make that your practice here in this country. Stop believing what you, that you know what other people feel and start to work with your own mind. And try to see if I feel bad when I hurt somebody else and I'm not necessarily showing it, maybe somebody else also. Are you going around? So what happens when you harm or hurt somebody? Somebody's insulted, somebody is, well here it happens very quickly. So for me it's a bit difficult sometimes to take examples because I don't live here long enough. Because insulting here and getting angry here is like, you know, like uh, the, the flowers in the desert after the rain. It's like, yeah, it's so easy to insult somebody here. So easy for people to be upset. It's amazing. You know, some little thing is like, Arr! but it also dies down quite quickly afterwards. Whereas in Switzerland, it takes a lot, but then people hold on to it very long. So I'm not saying it's bad what is happening here. I'm just saying, Sometimes I find it difficult to understand. Like the other day, and if I would be very sensitive, I'd be insulted most of the time. You know, because the other day somebody was t taking my bag, and usually it's very light because there's almost nothing in it. But then the mandala set was in it, which is like rice and, and little stones and this and that. And she looked at me, she was outraged, and she said, why is this so heavy? <laughs> There's the mandala in it. But if you are very sensitive and very weak, you would feel hurt. Somebody shouting at you in such a way, you know. Now, this is what Israeli people do. You probably don't notice it, kind of. Um, you only, you know, when I tell these stories, people who are not Israeli and live here, they go, yeah, this is what they do. But because you're of this culture and everybody does it, then it becomes kind of normal. But it's not. So it's, this whole thing about you know hurting others and, and this and that is is very complicated. Yeah. So 
as you say, forgiving means, usually we think, I forgive somebody who has harmed me. But it also means I need, when I have harmed somebody else, I need to be able to forgive myself so that I'm not feeling guilty anymore, so I can approach that person with an open heart, so that when the person says, get lost, I never want to see you again, it's okay. I give them the permission because I have harmed them. Because the problem is when we go and want to apologize and when we approach them again, we expect them to say, yeah, yeah, it's okay, isn't it? That's the expectation. And if it's not, then, wow, the whole thing turns around. I'm the victim, you're the aggressor. And this game we play all the time, all the time. Yeah, it's your fault. I came to ask for forgiveness, you are Hurting me because you're not forgiving me is your fault. This is what we do. Yes or no? Most of the people. Some people maybe not, but most of the people, yeah. So we go from aggressive to victim to a victim to aggressive to aggressive to victim and that. And then both, both roles are rotten. They're not, they're not uh, causes for a happy life. It's very difficult to let go. It's very difficult to let go. And I, 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 you know, I was cheated by somebody, but it was my fault. It was like, again, how the ego can play kind of a game. So at one point, uh, somebody was ringing, ringing the door in, in Bern. He was a young Tibetan. And he, 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 he was surprised to see a nun. So he was very happy to see a nun. And he said, oh, Anil, I'm looking for my brother. And we need to go to Geneva because there is a demonstration uh, for, the, for the Tibetan because they also lost their country, in case you don't know, um, uh, for, for Tibet, for free Tibet, da, 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 blah, blah, blah. And I don't have the money for the tickets. My brother has it. I can't find him. So I have been doing a practice while he, when he was ringing the bell which is a, a ritual that you try to repay debts to people who are reborn as spirits. So you make little cakes and then you offer them that. Very naive, I do admit, but at least I do something. And I love to do this practice. It's because these people who are reborn as spirits, you don't have to believe it, but this is what you said, they can come and harm you and they harm your nervous system because they harm you mentally. So then you need to repay that debt because they're still angry at you. So it's called like an offering for the spirits who harm. It's all psychological, it's all mental. Because if I know I made up for it, I calm down. That's it. Whether there is a spirit or not, I have no clue. But I feel if I do it, it works. And this is maybe some people saw me yesterday also. I did some offering also, an incense offering is what I do. Usually I do it at night. And today, yesterday I did because then some people might get upset if they see me lighting fire on Yom Kippur. So it's no problem to do it before. So anyway, so I was in the mood of giving. Anyway, I was in the mood of making up for my, for my, for for the for the negative actions I've done, and I know I've done negative actions. You know, I know I've hurt people out of self-concern, getting angry at them, and all this, and not being respectful. I know that. I don't have to go like, oh, I'm so good, I never do that. So <coughs> I was in the mood of giving, and I go very openly, I say like, oh, do you need money? How much money do you need? So he said, 350 euros. So I said, okay. I give, and he said, I'll bring it back tomorrow, So because I was in the mood of giving, and I was very happy. I was really very happy I was in the mood of giving. I gave him these, um, I didn't even have 350, I gave him 400, because I didn't have change. So I gave him 400 Swiss francs which is almost 400 euro. And um, then I thought, maybe I should ask for his phone number. But I thought, ah. So then um, I said, what's your name when he left? And he hesitated and he said, Tenzin. And then I said, uh oh. This is like here, Boaz, or uh, Shlomit, or you know, I'm just looking that way, with very common name. Like 80% or 60% of the Tibetans' name is Tenzin. So, um, so I thought, uh-oh. But I was still quite happy, and I, I, I kind of knew he's not coming back. <laughs> but I was still happy. And then a friend of mine, another nun, came, and I was still making these cakes, and she, I said, you know what? I think the spirit came to collect the debts himself. <laughs> so now, 
you know, because I was, actually I was making these cakes, I was thinking, that's a bit cheap to repay the debts, it's not enough, you know, <laughs> kind of just making these cakes and then throwing them out and then the birds come and eat it. So I was still happy. Next morning, or a few days after that he hadn't come, in the morning, I was sitting in my meditation, I had this tightness here. And I thought, what the heck is going on? I had lost all the happiness, I was not angry, but there was some tightness in the heart. And then I saw what it was. I felt stupid and naive that, you know, he should have, he has a phone in his hand, and he says, I'm looking for my brother. He can phone his brother. And I, I'm not intelligent enough to see that he is just telling lies. And that was the bad feeling. It was about me, it was not about him. Yeah. Because he, they, after then I told the story, they said, oh yeah, he also came to our house. Because in Switzerland we have very many Tibetans, we also have Buddhists, so uh, they hang prayer flags in the, you know, because the prayer flags are for, the wind moves through them and it carries the prayers outside, the good wishes outside for the beings into the atmosphere. That's why you hang prayer flags, not because it's pretty. Um, all the flags make people happy, I'm a fluttering thing. So then, um, so I was telling the story and someone said, oh yeah, he also came to my house and my partner gave him a hundred francs. And then a bit, little bit later, um, somebody said, I have, I share my apartment with a Tibetan. She opened the door and he said, oh, 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 I'm looking for a yoga studio. And then he left, he didn't tell his story because he knew that with the Tibetan they wouldn't get through. So, so that's it. So he's. He's a refugee, you know, who lives on very little money. They do get support, but very little. If he would have told me, I'm a refugee, can you give me some money? I would have given him 20 euro, like that. He was very happy when he left. Wow, he was so happy. Yeah. <laughs> so, and you see, the thing is, of course, for his karma, it's really not good. To use his intelligence to kind of even cheat a nun out of 400 euro. But the thing is, it doesn't change my life at all. Whether these 400 euro are in the drawer or not, it doesn't change my life. Zero. Maybe when I'm old and really poor, I could meet these four. I could need these 400 euro, but at the moment, nothing. But if I don't take this feeling apart, this tight feeling makes the story. He is bad, and he should not do that. And they have to get him, and they have to find him. And yeah, like this. And then who suffers? You. It's me. Yeah. It's me. I suffer. But I say, okay, I was stupid enough to believe him. I practiced generosity with 400 euro, which I wouldn't have done if he would have told the truth. So all the better. You see, this whole thing that he's able to do it, it also has to do with my karma. Because as I told you, I stole money in my youth more than 400 euro. So why do I feel bad when somebody takes 400 euro from me? I stole more than 400 euro. I'm just thinking about this now. I have no reason to be upset. Zero. He came to help me purify my negative karma, which voluntarily I wouldn't have done. What do you think? How would you react? If what do you, you would... think? How would you react if you would know that he's going to cheat you? I would talk to him. Sorry? I would talk to him. What to tell him then? Huh? What to tell him then? I don't know. I would have to see uh, his answer when I ask him, why are you doing this? And then I would know what to say. Now I can't tell you. I don't know. This is it. There is no, you know, you are trying again to find a solution for a problem. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. There is no manual. There's no tutorial how to lead a happy life. The tutorial, the manual is, what do I do with my mind? No, how do I educate others so that they're not cheating me? Because that's what we want to do. We want to educate them so that they're not cheating me anymore. They're not such a nice motivation. Yeah? How do you release the feeling of guilt? That yeah, you totally. Were, that, but how you, the feeling not that you're angry at him, but that you're that angry I'm stupid. at yourself. Yeah, I started to laugh at it. I said, how could I know? How could I know? Yeah. It took about a half an hour to release the feeling of just accepting it, looking at it, and then sharing it with others. 
sharing the story with others, then it was released totally. It's not there anymore. Sharing, not holding it in. I'm stupid. I'm stupid, yeah, okay, come on. You know? And it's only in Israel that people started getting angry at me, you know, saying, wow, but you should have seen he has a telephone. Why did you believe it? Oh, wow. It's just people thought it was funny. The story here, it was like, they go angry at me for being stupid. I said, but it's my money, okay? It's not yours. So, how can you be so stupid? Yeah. But you said, you said, you said that you had the feeling, actually. That yeah. Will not come back. Huh? You had the feeling the moment you gave him the money, or maybe I didn't. I was very happy. But you had the feeling it could be yeah. that he's not coming yeah, back. Yeah, but still, I was one part of the mind still counts that I was already expecting him not to come back. Exactly. So the happy it's feeling not, lasted you much had longer. Ready from all your heart, and you and you, you, you knew it will not come back. Yeah, but still, this tightness feeling came three days later in the morning meditation. And this is why we need to see these things, so in order to dissolve them. Mm -hmm. This is why. Can I ask another thing about this? Yeah. I have a guilt with my children. When yeah. I yell at them, when I leave them, when I go, yeah. when I'm human with them. Yeah. 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 And uh, I would like to find a way, and I, I, I think if I can laugh about it, but I don't feel that I can laugh because I think it's wrong that I go into yelling at them and things like that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I, I know I'm in process, sometimes I can't control myself, yeah. and they are as annoying as they are sweet, <laughs> sometimes. Oh, that's a big problem, isn't it, with children, when they really don't do what, you, what would be good for them, not what, what you want to do. I think this is what is so frustrating, when you <laughs> see them doing things that are really harmful for them, not for you, but for them. And so I think uh, um, very important that you do tell them that you love them and you, are you go and say, I'm really sorry, I lost my temper, to be honest. Yeah. But also to say, look, if you would behave a little bit in a different way, I wouldn't lose it so often also. That it, you can, I think you can say, I don't know, I'm not a mother, but I would say, it's very difficult for me not to lose my temper when you behave like this. And I don't like myself either when I lose my temper. But I, I'm sorry, I can't control myself. And to work with your impatience, with meditation. You know. There's moments when we yell at children, but there's no guilt feeling, and then we know it was necessary. Sometimes it's necessary. There's moments when we feel guilty in general, and that's not just children, it goes with everybody for everybody, when sometimes I also get quite forceful and I feel, I feel not, don't feel guilty because it wasn't anger, it was seeing a situation and tuck, and interfering very forcefully and then usually I don't feel guilty and also they don't feel hurt. Like I have, I have children's classes so sometimes I go to the house of religion and give introduction to Buddhism and you know, are they difficult. <laughs> you know, they don't want to be there. So then I have to kind of think about something that interests them. And some are interested, but most of them are not. They're teenagers sometimes also. So it's not cool to be interested in religion as a teenager. So I play them rap songs that have some inspiring message in it or something like this, <laughs> then we discuss it. I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the one who's most inspired because I have to find things to inspire them. Then I find them, and then I get inspired, but they not. So it's like... <laughs> But anyway, so at one point there was one who was really listening and another one behind him was kind of kicking him. And I saw him and I said, if you don't stop, you're out. <laughs> I said, I'm like, what? And he immediately stopped and it was okay. And then I went to him at the end and I said, look, I'm sorry. He said, no, it's okay. <laughs> it came like this. And this is what we call sometimes, it's not justified, it's not anger. It's this, the force that we have you know that you need to interfere, and it should be maybe some waste, but I don't know. Because I, I, I didn't have time to get angry at that point, because I saw it, and I didn't wait also. I saw it, and I said it. So, what can you do with your guilt? Well, you know, you will not be the perfect mother no matter what you do. How many of you who are grown-ups now think you had the perfect mother always? Thank <laughs> you.